Good morning, dear clients, and welcome to today's webinar from Noron. We have two portfolio managers from Noron on the line with us today. Uh, it's Oscar Ormegard. He's the CIO for equities and portfolio manager for the Swedish equity fund Noron Active. And Johan Svanteson, he's the portfolio manager for sustainable equity, which is a Nordic equity Article 9 fund. Before we start, just a few housekeeping items for today's webinar. We will kick it off with a presentation on Noron Active by Oscar for about 20 minutes, followed by a first Q&A. All participants will be in listen-only mode during the presentation. For the Q&A, we will unmute everyone. You can then ask questions by using the panel of the GoToWebinar software, which is sort of in the right-hand corner of your screen now, where you'll find a hand sign, and you also find a sign for the microphone. Simply press the hand sign so that we know that you want to ask a question. Then you can unmute yourself and you can ask your question. After the first Q&A, we will have a second presentation of Noron Sustainable Equity Fund by Johan, again, around 20 minutes. And we will also follow that second presentation up with a uh, Q&A. We will also record this webinar and send you the link to the recording, including the slides later this week. Before I hand over to Oscar, I just want to tell you why Open Funds is happy to work with Noron. We like them because the Nordics are interesting. Uh, they performed 11.1% uh, since 2003, outperforming Europe by a full 3% per annum. So it's a very interesting area to be invested in. Noron is a true alpha generator. They have created alpha of around 4% in Noron Active since 2013, so for a, a good nine-year period, and have also outperformed in the Noron Sustainable Equity Fund, which was launched two years ago. And last but not least, Noron is a partner-owned company. The PMs and uh, the CEO, they own together about 57%, and they have a stable anchor investor in Orca. But so they sort of like have skin in the game, and that is something we really look for uh, if we choose managers that we would like to work with here in Switzerland. With this, um, over to you, Oscar. All right, thank you very much, and good morning to you all. Um, we will uh, start talking about the um, Noron Active Fund, uh, which is a actively managed uh, Swedish long only equities. Um, we have had, um, as, as Stefan mentioned, a, a good alpha generation uh, over over the, all the all the years. Uh, it was incepted since it was started in 2011, so a little bit more than two, 10 years running uh, this fund. Um, the excess returns has, has come from two parts, uh, partly from 50% uh, from the Swedish and medium-sized companies, which we called CASE. These type uh, of, of companies are our holdings uh, tend to to be in the longer longer in our portfolio, and the the, the other 50% are driven by by large uh, large cap companies, both in value and growth segment. Um, this is a, a concentrated uh, and liquid portfolio. Uh, we we aim to have around 30 holdings over time. Uh, it can change a little bit be, between what type of market we're in, but uh, over time it should be around 30. And uh, around 80% is invested in large and mid cap names. Uh, so it, it's it's a, it's a liquid portfolio. Um, we say we have a balanced portfolio and what we mean about that is we have a balance between value and growth um, and, and on top uh, we have some interesting cases, uh, small cap names on it. But we, uh, I will go into a little bit further why we choose to have this the type of uh, balanced approach. Um, so we can move on uh, to, to the next uh, slide and then we see the, um, the historical returns. Here, the, the uh, dark gray line is Noron Active, uh, which has been uh, outperforming our benchmark, which is the Stockholm Benchmark Index uh, that holds 120 names, um, with uh, 4% before fees annually, uh, and the Europe MSCI Europe Index with uh, around 7% uh, annually since, since start. Um, 
Yeah, here's just an alpha graph. So what uh, what we are saying and how we we reconstruct this portfolio is um, uh, like this. We have in in the bottom uh, we have value names um, type of of um, um, stable large cap companies uh, that uh, with with around 10 to 15 10 to 14 names within it the position size is uh, 3 to 8 percent with a median uh, of, of four over time but these are type of names that we uh, that we know very very well but we, we tend they don't tend to 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 grow more than the market and than the average GDP growth but these are these should be uh, companies that um, that we we believe ha has a great um, a, a good uh, strategy and uh, and a, a good um, and management underlying uh, so we don't get into any any um, value traps in, in, into so to say on the other on, on, moving up we have in growth names and these are typically larger in size um fewer names but larger in size uh, you, you probably know a few of them here you can say atlas copco hexagon this type of, of companies grow faster than the general market and has done so for very for a long long time um and on on the on on the top thing we have uh, on the top of, of the portfolio we have um, what we call case these are small and mid cap companies the position size is quite uh, quite a little bit uh, quite uh, smaller just because we we tend these type of, of, of names uh, normally has a illiquidity factor in it so we don't want to be stuck in any 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 of these of, of these names just because of the liquidity thing so why are we actually doing this combination or this balance between value and growth? Um, over time, we um, oh, sorry. Um, this is how on the on, on the graph we can see the MSCI Nordic value between the uh, versus the MSCI Nordic growth since 2001. What this this tells us is that. It's a very, very tricky part to 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 be able to um, um, to um, um, make the, the when when to use value, when when to have value in the portfolio, and when to have growth in the portfolio. Um, it's it, it's over time it tends to go to zero. That's where we are right now. A little, actually, value has gone a little bit further than than growth. But we, what we believe is, is that they, these, um, they tend to do well in different type of market climates. Um, so this is why we think that we, if we have, if we can identify good value names in every single part of, of the economy and also growth names, we believe that we can outperform. And I think that our track record has shown that this is a, a way to go because you can easily get stuck in the wrong wrong factor and, and uh, underperform the market quite heavily. Uh, we've seen that in the, uh, the, recent, uh, the recent years now, when we, we, where growth has been uh, an outperformer for four or five years during the low rate uh, environment. And now you actually has, has given away all that, more or less all that uh, outperformance for, uh, in a very short period. Yeah. Um, just looking at the, how we position ourselves in, in the different market scenarios, if we have an optimistic market scenario, we tend to have more growth names in it, um, and in that, in that, uh, that tends to leave us uh, taking down our value segment. We believe that growth is, is, is in an optimistic market scenario, more, more uh, better fit than just playing on that you will have a multiple expansion in the value names, which you very seldom do. Um, but you also have, we also take up our case, our small and mid cap, cap uh, uh, holdings to 15%. It will not be larger than that. That's what we aim to. Um, because these type of names um, um, tend to have something that will be very interesting uh, for the for 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 the stock market, and which we believe is actually going to drive our outperformance in a more new, uh, neutral market scenario. And this is actually where we are right now in their portfolio. 
uh, we have a very we have a value segment of 50 percent and a growth of, 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 of 40 and then case is 10 percent which is the lower part of of, of the of the market uh, or of, of the portfolio construction um this is because we believe that this, the small cap names will not at this type of uh, in this type of market be the driver for the for the portfolio these are normally type of names that uh, need to have a more less volatile market and able to perform by itself but we think that there, there it's still going to be growth in the in some segments of the market and that's why we at the moment have, have increased or, or taken up our growth names uh, or, or make it more balanced versus the, the value segment and of course, in a more cautious scenario, we have the value names uh, being uh, being um, the, the, the preferred pick because there we don't see the risk of getting a multiple contraction in the way that the, the growth names um, uh, tend to, to be in that scenario. And that's it's been very, very um, clear to us this year as well. So looking, looking how we do the selection process, uh, every Monday we go through uh, a, a meeting with all the portfolio managers here at, at Noron, um, looking through the different macro trends, um, and, but, um, how the external analysis is going, uh, but also on the fundamental side, uh, we, we, we see the company specific, if something's happened there, how the estimates generally are moving in the market and of course valuation where we are in in, in, in that in a, in a historical side um esg is definitely on on uh, on top of our mind we we believe that we are in the forefront of that um but mm -hmm. here here we go through if we have any names on the esg watch list as we call it uh, companies that has maybe has some question question marks regarding the esg and how we work through those in order to be able to to actually take investments in those names if we if we find them interesting um this goes through then to takes us to what we are looking for um if we believe that we 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 are closer to the pivot from the central banks, for example, we will be looking for growth names. And that's where we are a little bit now. We, we believe that the market will not be able to, to withstand this quite of heavy rate increases uh, and not break the economy, so to say. So we are actually now looking on, on the growth side. Uh, as I mentioned a little bit more, we're taking this step by step. We're not taking any drastic mes measures at this time. Uh, but uh, growth, uh, and here we are looking at the quality companies. These will be, be growing her, uh, earnings higher than, that, uh, than what we think is discounted in the market. But this must be a predictable business. And no, normally at this time, we're looking for large cap global companies that will not, that doesn't rely on a single area for, for their growth. Um, so that, that's where we are. Moving into there, um, if we if we believe that the growth names is is the way to look in, we go into the, the next slide, uh, next segment then, and that's that's the more subjective assess, uh, assessment. Um, in the growth names, strategy is of course very very important. How will they be able to grow, outgrow, continue to outgrow the market? Will the management be is, is that the management who is is the right fit for for that? Uh, we, we tend to look at uh, management with a long track record, not the not the the, the 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 boom and bust type of management. We just we are just in there for 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 a short period of time, um, and then of course ownership very very important for us. Uh, we tend to focus on on uh, um, the real owners, so to speak, the the, the heavy industrial owners, uh, for example, uh, P, uh, private equity owners is uh, something we we don't tend to invest in that heavily uh, which we just because of their of the nature of the private equity fund um which we believe it is not maybe there for the long the real long term that we really want to see and then of course um on the next uh, thing is on the fundamental side there's estimates um very very important to be especially in these type types of market where are the 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 sell side estimates where are the market estimates going forward um we tend to see now that the 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 sell side analysis is quite slow in their way of thinking where the world and where the 
these companies' earnings will come from. Uh, so we do a lo in these type of markets we do a lot of of own uh, um, own uh, valuation metrics and and own, own thinking because just because of, of the what we believe is the lag of the of the sell side and that's it so it has has been for the last at least 15 years that uh, the, the, um, the 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 analysis made from the sell side is is quite um, um, quite slow in the way of of, of taking down the estimates. And valuation, of course, is is one part. I think valuation is more important on the on the um, um, on the value names um, more uh, more than on growth, where where strategy is more important, which we believe. And the last thing, of course, the ESG. Uh, what's the what is the sustainability strategy for this, and how are they reporting? Um, we believe that the, the, if if you have a good ESG strategy, you will be a winner. Of this in the, towards the end market as well. These are longer, uh, longer thinkings, and this doesn't change from one day to another. But if they have a, they have a credible strategy, we believe that the, that's going to be a one driver for 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 the company's valuation and for, for the company's uh, actually revenue growth going forward. So going for, going forward to the, how we own this the position uh, after the selection process. Uh, we do regular company company meetings, of course. Um, this um, in 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 a, in a market which is in a turmoil like this, uh, company meetings is um, it could be both good and bad, in, so to speak, because uh, the management normally tend to to hold on with 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 what they believe in until the market gets the sign that they're actually the the the, the earnings is going on in another direction. Um, but here, here are our own assessments more important at this time. Uh, but of course, estimate changes. Uh, if we see um, something um, very di different in the macro uh, climate, we can we can we can change. For example, if we see if we see signs of pivot coming close here, uh, we would uh, take down our, our uh, value segment. And that that's not because of of. Of, of the valuation side, it's more of, of just the general market, and we've been seeing, we saw that in the in the early 2019 as well, uh, where growth names come into came into favor again. And then, uh, lastly, then how do we exit this type? Um, uh, first of all, uh, valuation. If they if they if they are reaching our target valuation, um, but also just because we have a very concentrated portfolio, we uh, we match our holdings towards each other every single day. If we can find an, another investment which is actually better fit uh, um, than than what we are uh, having in the moment, we will change that holding. Um, and it, it could also be, for example, looking at the, some of the value names, especially the banks. Um, banks valuation looks still cheap. But in a relative perspective, it started to look quite expensive. And what do we actually think is going to be the driver going forward in the um, um, uh, for the general market? And that's why we've been actually taking down our banking exposure uh, the last uh, three, four weeks. And um, that's that's normally a good, that's normally the, the good things. If uh, on on the bad side, if we, if, if we see uh, that the investment case has changed. For example, as I mentioned, the macro side that could be an investment case uh, changing. Uh, we 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 would sell that type of name, and of course, the most important, if we see a changes in strategy and the management, and also the sustainability focus, we will uh, we will challenge that to the, towards the company. And if we don't like the answer that we and we we are in a different thinking that what the what the, the market and the what the management thinks, we would we would exit that. We have a few of those examples, but um, we can take that uh, in the later if, if, if there's something that comes to, uh, to mind for you. Um, so, so that's uh, in short um, a little bit how we, how we work uh, for, for, the, for the Neuron Active. Um, I think um, at this point of time, I think this is one of the most uh, important or most exciting products, actually, just because we don't really know how where the the, the market is going. We we've seen the inflation numbers uh, being um, coming in higher still than the, the, what the general market thinks. And then I think this this product will help you not to be not to be caught in any value traps or not be taken 
uh, too aggressive stance in, in the uh, in the growth names. So you get the po balanced portfolio which will move along the market, but with an uh, hopefully an, an continued excess excess uh, return to you to to, to you um, the holders of of, of the um, of the fund. I think I, I will stop here and uh, open up for for uh, some questions. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Oscar. Uh, as uh, said at the beginning, if you want to ask a question, I think we have said everything to unmute now, so the participants can just click on the microphone button and uh, ask a question. Maybe I can start it off while people are thinking about the first question. Uh, you showed on slide 15 uh, your selection process, explaining what you're looking for, and you also explained how it swings back between uh, value and growth. Can you give us just maybe two concrete examples where what company is in the portfolio that represents your value tilt and what is in the company that explains your growth tilt and why did you choose them? So that we can see it with like two real life examples of the portfolio. Yeah, we can start, uh, we can start on the value names. We can do that in appendix. Um, here, for example, on the left-hand side, I think this is a very good example of, of, a, of a pure value name, uh, Electrolux. It's a, it's a white goods um, uh, company, a manufacturing company, probably seen it uh, around Europe. Um, this is a t typical value name. Um, we, um, they, um, they are one of, of, of the, the, the largest companies in the white goods names, the Dam and Whirlpool. Whirlpool is normally stronger in the US and the uh, Electrolux is stronger in, the, in, in Europe. But what, what we look at this is that the uh, a, a pure value name for us should be where you don't, uh, where you have some sort of recurring uh, or replacement factors, so to say. Electrolux, for example, have two thirds of their, um, of their sales in replacements. Um, if you look, if you backtrack the sales, the revenue line for Electrolux, we the, the the sales normally tend to move not not move down more than 10 to 15 percent uh, in a in a in a in a bad market and uh, that it's the, but on the on the on the EBIT line it moves it moves a lot more that's just because you have a lot of of, of you have a small margin mar small margin of error you have input costs that's uh, right that's uh, constantly shifting quite heavily. We've seen it in, in steel prices last year and this year, for example. But this is the type of name. We normally look at these value names on the EV sales, mm -hmm. just because we think, just as I mentioned, the, the, the uh, lower you get, uh, the, the earnings estimates could shift quite more heavily. So we see it on, on the top line side instead. And here you can see uh, how the, on the EV sales multiple, this tends to, to, to go. Um, for example, now Electrolux is, is trading below 0.4% uh, or 0.4 in the EV sales. Um, that tells us that the, that the market is believing that somewhere you will have a margin less than 4%, roughly. Um, we believe that's a little bit too pessimistic in one side. But also, on the other hand, if uh, you can see it uh, when it, when it starts to spike, uh, when it comes up to 165 or 0 0.65, 0 0.7, they will, they will not have over time a 6, 7% margin. They can have it for a few, one or two quarters, but they will never have it. So these are type of things we look at. Now we think it's too cheap. We think the, the, the market has been too pessimistic on it. They don't, they don't value the, the, the replacement factor in this. Um, and it, it's very easy to be, be short this name just because it's a consumer. But uh, if you have a if you have a refrigerator that's that's broken, you have to fix it. You can't trade down, but you still have to fix it. Um, so we think that these that that, that type of, of, of name is is uh, is interesting in a uh, in a value basket. Um, but it, we have we have been carrying this for for in and out for quite some time. Um, you, ne you can never be carried away, get carried away in these type of names because they will never be uh, be as good as what the management says that when everything is working very very well. Um, that's an, one example. On, on, on the 
growth names, some say like we're we're then looking at uh, we can take this uh, renew cell for example. It's a growth uh, slash uh, um, small cap uh, case name. Um, this is one of the most interesting names I think we have in the portfolio for um, for the next five years. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're actually a, a, a first in the world of, of uh, uh, dissolving uh, uh, pulp, uh, textile production, recycled textile uh, production. Um, they have, uh, their main owner is H&M, which you probably know, uh, and they're actually doing a pilot project with Inditex as well. Um, these, these are now up and running and starting producing um, uh, recycled uh, cotton here in Sweden. It's, it, the process is very like the, 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 the pulp pr production. So the management teams comes from an old pulp mill in Sweden, which we believe that is, is very good for the long term and they know the process. But just to look at the, the, how the, the big thing about this, uh, this, th this company will have a production of 60,000 tons uh, towards the end of this year. Um, fully um, fully, fully um, developed uh, production will be 360,000 tons in 2026. Um, that's 0.3, 0.4% of the total market. We believe that this is a, a, a major driver for this company. They, they are now selling their product at the same price as a normal cotton. We, we think that they could be easily jack their prices a little bit because looking at the end demand for this type of sustainability products, especially in the in the clothing business, looking what H&M actually is uh, is um, and, and aiming for in the sustainability side. They, for example, wants to have 30% recycled products in their line by 2026. One way of doing this and, 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 and is to buy this company's Renew Sales product um, going forward. So we, we think that they, 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 this is a stock that could uh, actually um, easily double and uh, even more um, over the next period of, of, of time, over the next five years. So this is a typical growth name that will grow no matter how actually the, the, the general market is, more growing on their own merits, so to speak. So I think if, if, if that uh, gave, you, gave you an in, insight a little bit of how we're thinking in the growth and value side. Mm, thanks a lot. Other questions from the audience? Maybe if I may then, uh, just a second question with the macro environment. I mean, part of the selection process is uh, that you look at macro and now the big topic is the rise in interest rates and the actions of uh, the central banks. So what's your underlying macro scenario? Are we already very close to the peak or are the central banks just doing everything to kill inflation and it will take a, quite a long time back even into 2023? So what's your macro scenario underlying it, your stock picks? Yeah, it's of, of course always difficult to say if we're if we're 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 at the peak or close to the peak. But we're, we're, what we believe is that we see uh, quite a number of signals in the CPI numbers that uh, actually that that the, the the inflation will be coming down. Uh, the um, uh, the late cyclical, so to speak, in the inflation numbers has been rents and food. Uh, looking at food, is actually food price index has been coming down a little bit. Uh, um, rents is still the, the, the of course, the, the topic. And what we are looking for is, that, of course, the unemployment numbers. I, I think you, you, you maybe all saw the employment numbers on Friday, which was a lot stronger than, than expected. So, of course, that has been um, the, the main theme from the central banks has been killing the inflation. Um, and as long as the job market is uh, healthy. Um, so, I think that we, we will. We are com coming closer, of course. Every day is closer to that. But I think it, it, it might be a little bit too early to say that that, that we will see an, a, a change and an aggressive change in from the central banks. But 
for the next couple of months, I think we should we we should be able to see some sort of of, of ease in the inflation numbers. And remember that we're going we're 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 meeting, um, so to speak, easy comps uh, in the in in the next year in the inflation numbers. So the year over year numbers will look uh, quite a little bit better as well. So maybe we will we we, we will see that we're coming down to the to. Two to three percent inflation, and then we will probably see an, a, a central banks being a little bit more at ease, especially in the U.S. Then, um, so um, we're not taking the full position of saying that this, this is this is um, the the worst is behind us, uh, but uh, we're 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 getting closer to it, um, and that's why we think uh, still the balanced portfolio is a very very good uh, good pick in this uh, in this environment. Um, but of course, the electric we will. We have to monitor very, very um, closely how the, the the electric fuel prices are moving. Now we saw what the what the Germans are doing at the gas capping gas here uh, uh, this week. Um, so that will probably ease some some sort of some some of the of the consumer sentiment. Um, but there are there are quite there are of course a, a few worries still out there. But that's why it's so important to have to choose companies that are actually uh, can can outgrow the market and have products that can actually grow in the, in a um, in a in a tougher environment. We don't want to take the so to speak the the quote unquote easy ones with the, where you just play the PMIs of the of, of the world. Because those type of names will probably have it harder. They will have it more difficult in the in the pricing environment. Um, we 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 want to own companies who have pricing power, which uh, that's one of the most key. Uh, since we have some some heavily increased prices for the, the, this year, we want to have uh, we want to own companies that could keep those prices going into next year, where volumes will probably go down a little bit. So that's where we're looking. Okay, thanks a lot, Oscar. I I think we have one more question from uh, from another participant. I think that's me. This is Liz uh, in the Zurich office. I'm just curious to know if you could clarify on that question. Um, does that mean you showed us three pie charts? Are you moving from the pessimistic scenario to the neutral scenario or from the neutral scenario to the um, optimistic market scenario at this point? Yeah, we have moved from the from the cautious more or the pessimistic into the neutral now. Um, I think that for the for the next couple of months, that's where we're going to be. Um, then I think we will. Because what we are looking with our one of the last triggers for us to get a little bit or more optimistic is looking for estimates coming down. This is what we are actually seeing now um, for for the 2023 numbers. Estimates are starting to move down a little bit. Um, we are still quite helped of the on the FX side here in Sweden. Um, so the underlying estimates are actually the volume estimates are, are are moving down more than what it looks like in the in the uh, on the on the EPS side. Um, I think we need to get some clarification on where how much lower the estimates can come. Um, I think we're on a very good path towards towards the the bottom of it. Looking especially in the cap goods names on the volume side. Um, but um, so I would I would say. That, if everything, if go, things go like we believe now, I think we are what we're seeing now. I think you could you could see us moving up the 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 growth sector um, towards the end of the year. But um, for the next uh, for the next um, one and a half two months, I think we're going to be in the neutral market scenario. Great, thanks a lot, Oscar. I think. Uh... Being mindful of the time, I think it would be a good thing to switch over to Johan and uh, talk about uh, the Sustainable Equity Fund. Thank you. Uh, so, Nora Sustainable Equity is an um, Article 9 fund, uh, meaning that it's focusing on sustainable investments as, and have uh, sustainable investments as its objective. Uh, the fund is investing in the Nordics and are focusing on companies that we think are competitive through sustainable products and uh, services. 
Uh, the fund was launched uh, in 2020 and has been able to deliver an excess return since inception. Uh, and we believe there are some factors that will contribute uh, to the excess return even in the coming years. Uh, we think that strong online drivers as well as a long investment horizon uh, in addition to enabling companies will, will be able to contribute to the excess return. Uh, we have a rather long investment horizon in the fund, meaning that we want companies to have the best uh, possible opportunity to, to deliver and to grow uh, and show us that they can develop their sustainable approach uh, during time. And the portfolio is rather diversified. We have about 45 companies in, in the fund today. So this is the performance uh, since inception. Uh, Non-sustainable equity is the dark uh, line in, in the chart. Uh, and this shows that we have outperformed both uh, the Dinks benchmark, uh, Nordic benchmark, and the MSCI Europe ESG leaders uh, by about 10 percentage points. Uh, we have also outperformed the S&P Global Clean Energy Index, uh, which has been a rather volatile uh, volatile during these years and this fund is focusing on four uh, different uh, investment teams meaning this that it is a it is a diversified portfolio and we are not only focusing on on green companies so i think this picture is basically showing why we did start the fund uh, two years ago uh, as you can see on the left hand side we saw that there was a lot of sustainable capital out there that wanted to invest in in sustainable companies and uh, sustainable companies was the same as green companies meaning that uh, the valuation of these companies got very very high the multiples were high and we saw this as unsustainable uh, looking looking ahead but uh, in 2020, the uh, uh, EU taxonomy uh, entered into force, meaning that we saw a new definition of sustainable investments. Now it's possible to invest in, in green companies, in transition companies, and in enabling companies. Uh, green companies is just as before, the, it's companies focusing on clean energy or, or recycling. Uh, transition companies are companies that we need in the society in order to to develop the uh, infrastructure and and the cities uh, and enabling companies are actually companies helping transition companies to 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 actually do the transition so they are supporting the transition companies to 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 be a better company so to say uh, for example, uh, a transition company could be a steel company uh, or a real estate company. Uh, real estate company is one of the, the sectors that emission most of the CO2 in, in Europe, for example. And an enabling company can, can be a company that actually is helping the transition company to re reduce the, the CO2 emissions. So, uh, we are focusing on enabling companies. We think that enabling companies are companies that can both deliver uh, solid, uh, solid margins compared to green companies and uh, also have a stable organic growth uh, compared to transition companies that are more cyclical in, in nature. So we think that uh, enabling companies are creating really, really interesting, uh, interesting investment opportunities. And it's something that we that we want to be invested in uh, during the coming years. And this is so the the EU taxonomy is one thing that we are focusing on, but we are also focusing on on the UN Sustainable uh, Development Goals in order to to keep an diversified and and interesting portfolio. And one other thing to to say about the EU taxonomy is that the EU, the EU taxonomy is it's a framework uh, how to actually evaluate whether a company is, is green or is sustainable or not and this framework will develop over time uh, meaning that 
we think that the universe will be will be will increase uh, over time and we think that we if we are uh if we are uh upreading on this we will be able to to find interesting up investment opportunities uh, going forward so looking at the selection process it's uh, differs uh, a bit from the non sustainable non active uh, we are focusing on on two things uh, each company needs to be uh, sustainable but also have an interesting valuation so we are combining those uh, those two to uh, specific factors uh, on the sustainability side we we want companies that actively contribute to one of the fund's sustainable objectives, which I will come back to. Uh, companies need to contribute to one of the UN SDGs. Uh, we are looking for companies with high taxonomy alignment or companies that we think will have high taxonomy alignment uh, in the coming years. And as said, we are, have a special focus on enabling companies since we think these companies are very attractive looking at both valuation and on the sustainability side and looking at company specific factors we're focusing on the companies that are driven by uh, interesting and secular trends it should be regulatory tailwinds and we want that quality companies meaning that we want to find companies that we believe can grow their profits uh, at a higher rate than, than is discounted by the market. So uh, in addition to, to growth companies, we are looking at case companies, meaning that we want companies with high potential uh, where we think our in-house analysis can, can create uh, interesting investment opportunities. And uh, looking up at on the right hand side, we, we are also looking, yes, that's uh, not an active on subjective assessment, fundamental analysis and ESG. Uh, this is uh, pretty much the same, but we have a more focus on the ESG side, of course. And also we are more growth tilted, uh, meaning that subjective assessment and, and of course, fundamental analysis is, is really two, two important parts of, of our analysis. So this slide is uh, showing, a simple, uh, showing a simplified picture of, of how we are doing our sustainability analysis. Uh, starting with the analysis, we are looking at ESG risks. Uh, we're looking at the good governance practices. We're looking at policies. We need some the companies to to follow what we think uh, is a sustainable company on the selection part we have we have exclusion criteria but also a watch list that that oscar mentioned uh, if a company have done something bad uh, we can put it on a watch list and we are not uh, able to invest in it so we we need to monitor uh, a lot of companies and on the documentation part we we are following up companies that we are invested in or have been invested in. And all this is integrated into Bloomberg, meaning that it's really easy for us to follow up on companies and, and look how they have performed uh, during the years and, and uh, also uh, keep a good documentation of all of this. So if you look on the, on the right side, you can see our sustainable objectives and each company needs to to actively contribute to one of these objectives uh, when we do the investment so uh, on the management process side uh, we we are not focusing on on macro uh, in this fund uh, we're focusing like on on stock picking on the on the, on trying to be, find the best companies at, at, at attractive valuations. Uh, but of course, we do company meetings, analyst meetings, following estimate changes, and, and do the sustainability follow up. Uh, looking at the, the exit side, uh, we, we can do an exit when, when the company has reached uh, the valuation target. 
but many of these companies is growing and the profits are growing over time so we have as i said before a long investment horizon meaning that the turnover in this portfolio will be be rather low uh, compared with uh, many other uh, active actively managed funds uh, uh, on the negative side we we can exit a position if we see that they they have made some changes in their uh, sustainability uh, meaning that they can have some problems in the company or something that we don't think they they can fix uh, over time uh, we can also do an exit if we think that the the management has changed to the worst or the strategy uh, is not the same as as when we when we did the investment in the fund so this is uh, uh, uh slide showing how how the portfolio looks today uh, as you can see we have a, a larger uh, proportion of the investments in sustainable cities and infrastructure innovative and sustainable solutions and healthy and prosperous societies uh, the the share invested in climate and environment is rather low uh, this is mostly driven by that we think that these companies have a more uncertain business model and we see that the valuations still are uh, pretty high in these names uh, but this is something that we are following and we think that over time this uh, will increase and we will be able to find interesting opportunities in in, in this side also uh, we have seen uh, in the latest year that it has been a lot of ipos in this name uh, but it's also important for us to track these companies and see that they they can perform when they when they have been been listed uh, most of the the climate and environment companies are rather new companies so we we want to see some history before we we increase uh, this share and lastly when when looking at the valuation uh, of the fund and uh, uh, and the growth we can see that uh, the valuation of the fund on an aggregated level is somewhat higher than than the Winx uh, benchmark which is a Nordic uh, index uh, the sustainable equity is is the solid red line and uh, the the Nordic benchmark or the Nordic index is the dotted red line in the charts uh, however we think this is this is fair given that, that uh, our fund is uh, estimated to grow much uh, at a much higher rate than than the companies in the Nordic index uh, we think that our companies will show over time that uh, they will deliver uh, deliver growth in both in terms of growth, both profits and and sales kgar uh, so so we are quite happy with uh, with how the construction of the portfolio looks like and this is something that we think is very important i mean we need to find companies that we think are sustainable but also where we can find an attractive valuation so so we're we're really working with combining these two and um, and uh, this is something with, that we are uh, looking at on a monthly basis uh, at least so say So this is this was a short uh, summarize of Noron Sustainable Equity. Okay, thanks, Jon. Um, maybe I can also kick the Q and A off here this this time. Um, you you talked about this um, transition companies and enablers, and on slide twenty four you gave us a few names in your portfolio. Could yeah. you just maybe also Give us one, maybe maximum two examples uh, of companies that are in the portfolio that are these enablers and why did you choose them and what's the story why you have, have them in the fund? Uh, yes, of course. So uh, uh, looking on at the, at the left hand side in the top corner, we have Facade Gruppen under sustainable cities and infrastructure. Uh, 
Uh, Fasal Group is a company that we invested in in the IPO in uh, in, in the end at the end of 2020. Uh, they are focusing on renovation and uh, renovating uh, um, buildings uh, or on properties. So they they are doing uh, like uh, facade renovation and uh, also doing uh, energy energy uh, efficiency improvements for for real estates. And uh, this is a company that we think is interesting even in this environment when when it's quite uncertain, but most of the revenues from these companies uh, generated by, by uh, renovation, so we think it's not not that uh, cyclical uh, compared to to maybe a maybe a company focusing more on more on the steel side or or something like that. Uh, and on the, also we have uh, Instalco in in this. Um, in this um, share of the of the portfolio as well, this is also a company focusing on uh, energy efficiency improvements for uh, buildings. Uh, and uh, as, is, as as we all know, the 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 environment for for companies exposed to to energy is, is tough right now. And uh, these companies are actually. Uh, Having having a good time since they they, they can deliver uh, services uh, uh, in in accordance to to in, to um, improve the energy efficiency for for the real estates. Okay, thanks. Any other questions from the audience? Um, if that's not the case, then uh, I would like to thank Noron, uh, Oscar, and um, uh, Johan specifically very much for the presentation. As I said at the uh, beginning, this webinar has been recorded and we will follow up with all of you in the next few days, sending you the link to the recording and the slides of the presentation. Thanks a lot for taking the time to uh, join us today for the webinar. Thanks to the Noron team, and uh, I wish everybody a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.